more times than not, people who have a mental illness have a very supportive, caring family who try very hard to get them the supports but aren't always there to get. My name's Elaine and I'm mother, carer and advocate for my 26-year-old son who lives with a mental illness. This is my experience. When our son was growing up, he had a network of nice friends that he'd been to school with since he was five, and he was a good kid. He started high school uh, when he was 13, and very quickly things started to fall apart. Looking back, probably he was developing some kind of psychosis. The more we tried to discipline him, the worse he became. My husband and I were just at a loss what to do. He had changed basically in three months to being a person who we were losing control over. I got a phone call. Somebody alerted me to the fact our son was um, in some serious trouble. So I, I drove there and he was face down um, in the on the road with his hands handcuffed behind his back, surrounded by police. Went to the police, said, you know, that's my son. And he said, um, we're arresting him. He's um, threatened somebody with a knife. And, and I said to them, please, can you take him to a psych unit, which I knew about, to have him assessed. There is no way he would do anything like this unless he's very unwell. And I guess at that stage, I knew. I, I knew we were in serious trouble. My son was um, being held. He was handcuffed to the bed. He was extremely hostile, I think actually extremely frightened. Uh, there were four police um, surrounding the bed and myself. She asked him a couple of questions. Um, what was his name? Um, where did he live? What had he been up to? Each time he answered extremely negatively, shall we put it. And she said to me, he may have been psychotic, but he's fine now. We have a saying in the industry, he's either mad or bad, and he's bad. We brought him home to our home. Um, and that was basically the start, <laughs> the start of the nightmare, so to speak. Oh, good girls. Our son was passed between service to service for many years, with nobody willing to accept responsibility. At one stage, a meeting was called by a lot of the service providers that I had been in contact with. After two hours, somebody looked at their watch and said, well, the meeting has to end. Um, thank you for coming and uh, we wish you well. I actually said, please don't send us home with our son like this. I actually believe truly that somebody was going to say, you can't take him home. He's too much of a risk. We're going to do something with him. Towards the end of that particular period, I was ringing them on a weekly basis saying, things are not going well. And the response always to me was, has he threatened you with physical violence? That's the only way they would intervene. At the beginning of December of 2011, We'd had a particularly difficult weekend with our son. He'd slept, on average, I think, two hours over the weekend. He was extremely manic. He had a doctor's appointment on the Monday. I explained to, to them how unwell he was and there was no way he would attend the appointment. And for some unknown reason, fate or whatever, they said they would come to our home. I was at work. They came to our family home and they rang me about an hour later and they said under no circumstances go home we've visited your son he's extremely unwell he's made serious threats of safety towards yourself 
and um, we're waiting for the police to come and assist us to take him to a psych unit. I got home at five. They told me not to come home unless I had somebody with me. I arranged to meet my husband around the corner, so we came round the corner and the street had actually been cordoned off at the end. Um, there were two police wagons, a sedan and an ambulance outside our house. We got out the car, we went to the ambulance. Uh, we didn't know actually at, the st at that stage our son was in the ambulance. Um, I asked the police where our son was. I said, I think you're here for my son. Where, where, where is he? I feared the worst. And um, the police uh, officer said, uh, oh, he's all right, he's inside the ambulance. And he was, he was lying. He was strapped to the ambulance bed. He was having his um, pulse taken. He was extremely calm. Um, he was not hostile. I had an altercation outside with the police. They started to question me why we'd allowed him to get to the state, why we hadn't done anything sooner. So we dealt with that and they, the ambulance took him to our local psych hospital um, for assessment. You just can't explain it, how you feel as a parent knowing that this is happening to your son and that firstly, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, we've reached the point now we, we actually don't worry about what the neighbours think or what anybody else thinks. We feel for him, you know, that he's treated like a criminal um, because he has a mental illness. I truly believe if our son had had any other illness other than a mental illness, we would have been inundated with services willing um, to help us. There is no way if our son had had a physical illness, we would have been told as parents, home you go, see what happens within the next few months and good luck. As a mother of somebody who lives with a mental illness, what I want is a decent quality of life for my son. That's, that's all I want. I want him to be provided with services he, he deserves, he has a right to, uh, a holistic range of service services that we take for granted, accommodation, um, social networks, friends, interests, hobbies, all the things that up till now he's been denied or hasn't been able to establish. So as a parent, I think I want what most parents want for their a child, a, a decent quality of life.